walking down the street. Sometimes you can spot a device which story reaches back into antediluvian times. Most of us don't realize at all that humble electrical pole insulator used commonly to stabilize electrical line had in fact been used in prehistory as well as electricity insulator. And even if you know everything there is to know about electrical grid and all its parts, I suspect that what I am going to tell you about this device will be at least surprising and hopefully would make you think twice about wired electricity as the most efficient energy delivery technology. Egyptologists call this device a jet pillar. And before I tell you about traces of it in antediluvian past, let us see how it was portrayed in ancient Egypt. It is uh, true that while studying a lot of presentations about ancient Egypt, I never saw a real jet pillar device being found that could be used as a proof of its existence in a real world. With a multitude of artifacts discovered in Egypt, but not a jet pillar device to be seen, one could easily assume that jet pillar depicted on numerous reliefs and paintings of Egyptian antiquity is merely a symbol and it never was a real and usable tool. But then, I found a real version of it in a great pyramid of Giza and I never had to think this way again. So, if you never heard about it before, what is Jet Pillar? It is one of the most important symbols of ancient Egypt. We often can find a trio of walls, Jet and Ankh, placed together as if this collection of symbols was to signify their role in a single task, or even better, maybe a single technology. As for me, I suspect that this set of symbols is to portray the creation of a force with help of resonant technologies. Undoubtedly, there would be much to discuss about the walls and Ankh, but now let's talk about the jet pillar as a stability symbol as well as a real device. I have seen enough of material about ancient Egypt to understand jet pillars' multipurpose representations. Uh, it was seen by the ancient Egyptians as a backbone of the god Osiris. Uh, but if you were to study Egyptian reliefs and uh, paintings, uh, seeking the knowledge of human body, life and nature's energies, or as a technology symbol, I believe we won't get anywhere without understanding of how jet pillar was serving its purpose as a practical, usable device. Main purpose of this tool is to insulate, thus stabilize wireless energy devices by the way of protecting their resonance. So why is resonance so important for wireless energy distribution? It is so because a resonant coupling is a precise way of connecting wireless energy source and receiver. A resonant coupling creates a standing scalar wave between two objects sharing the same resonance values. Standing scalar wave travels continuously both ways between resonances and allows for electricity transport. Uh, wireless electricity needs to be swiftly distributed at the fine resonance of its source. For any device powered by wireless electricity, it has to be set to exactly the same resonance as wireless electricity source in order to receive power. A wireless electricity source and receiver need to be synchronized this way. This uh, process is known as a resonant uh, coupling connection. The classic problem with this method is that in the ground there might be places or objects resonating the same way. This could create a resonant coupling connection between powered device and underground resonance source. Then underground resonance could become resonantly coupled with wireless electricity source. This way wireless energy could be wasted underground. 
and this is where jet pillar comes into use. It works by the way of dispersing resonance coming from the earth. Because of a jet a pillar use, uh, wireless electricity delivery is insulated from earthly resonance and our imagined as yet wireless power device has stable power supply. Just as electrical cable is isolated with the help of materials that do not conduct electricity, wireless electricity delivery may be insulated with the help of a device called a jet pillar. Perhaps the best way of understanding uh, how this is happening uh, would be to consider gravitation to be a resonance carrier. Two most important gravitation directions are one directed towards the Earth center and another one is gravitation directed from the Earth center on its way up. A gravitation coming onto jet pillar from the above interacts with its smooth top surfaces so the resonance above it is well preserved. At the same time, resonance originating from inside the Earth becomes trapped and reflected at multiple angles while gravitational wave meets jet pillar on its way up and before it reaches its top. In short, our wirelessly powered device when placed above jet pillar will not get resonantly coupled with any potential resonance on the ground. This way it will remain safe to use. The role and ways of working of the jet device become even more obvious while investigating its presence inside the Great Giza Pyramid. At first it might be a little tricky because we need to study something that for untrained eye is not there at all. A jet device inside the Great Pyramid is there to protect its energy creating system from interacting with resonance that could exist above it. So far we have seen jet pillar protecting devices against resonance that could exist beneath them. This one, for change, protects a pyramid's internal system against a resonance carried by the gravitation coming from above it. I did quite thoroughly explain how Great Giza Pyramid created wireless energy and what role the so-called relieving chambers did play in this process in my previous presentation. At this time I will only describe how the relieving chambers functioned as a jet device that is built with thin air inside the chambers and the uneven floors. We need to use a similar kind of logic as applied before. A resonance underneath the relieving chambers, which is carried up by the gravitation directed from the earth center, is supported by the relieving chambers smooth ceilings. At the same time, resonance transported by gravitational waves coming down to earth is to be dispersed in multiple ways while reflecting on the surface of uneven floors inside the relieving chambers before it reaches Great Pyramid's King's Chambers ceiling. Thanks to it, anything above the relieving chambers, for example be it lightning or direct energy attack, would not be resonantly coupled with Pyramid's system. Knowing this, we can now easily assume that in the ancient past there were two kinds of jet devices. One that protected devices against resonance originating beneath them and another one protecting devices against resonance originating above them. In each case, jet device worked by the way of dispersing resonance carried by gravitation either gravitation coming down to Earth or gravitation directed from the Earth center, the one that supports earthly atmosphere. And now, uh, when we look at the pictures of Dendera lights, or we study a scalar wave antenna as seen in this picture, uh, we can clearly understand that jet pillar is employed there as an insulation from earthly resonance and we would know which way it is uh, happening. Uh, also knowing that ancient Egyptians used jet symbols to describe both technology and life uh, forces, we should have something to start with 
while interpreting other Egyptian pictures. One could easily start with investigating the spine as some kind of a biological jet pillar. Uh, finally, uh, we could ask how old is jet pillar invention? Uh, it is uh, possible, we will never know for sure, but the first information about it comes with the story of Atlantis. Nowadays, many people date Atlantis to time before the Great Flood. There are many stories uh, placing jet pillar in the middle of the mythical rings uh, city. Uh, some others mention the city being surrounded by the jet pillars, with some of them submerged under the water. Uh, in this case, such kind of placement suggests jet devices being used as a measure of defense against direct energy attacks. Because we know now jet devices' ways of working, we could investigate common sense of such a presumed defense system. Direct energy attack seeks or creates suitable resonance underground. Once found, a resonant coupling between energy source and suitably resonant underground area may be established, and so the wireless energy will be pumped into such underground place until it bursts up, creating earthquake. What's really interesting here is that the story of Atlantis demise could really suggest direct energy attack. Obvious a question arises, were there any direct energy wars in distant past? Was there or was there not Atlantis? Were there or were there not jet devices protecting mythical city? The only ever found real thing that we have now is a device inside the Great Pyramid. It is a jet device built of stone blocks and empty spaces. It might suggest, however, that the stories and symbols of the ancient past don't have to be pure fantasy. It will be up to us to find all the rest.